Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be looking at these three questions that come from a viewer of the channel. We're gonna break down the questions and ultimately try to understand it. The reason why I selected to do it this way is because I think these questions are worth talking about. This is essentially the fundamental basics when we're talking about selecting a power system and we're trying to ultimately optimize the power system. This is key here because you don't need to optimize for performance but if you are trying to optimize performance, these are the facts and the keys that you want to stick to as it relates to optimization of brushless motors, KV selection, and the voltage that you run. So we're gonna jump into this very shortly here, but before we do, I do want to thank the Patreon supporters for your continued support here. I have a couple of battery videos that I wanna do. I'm waiting for product that I've ordered several months ago, so I'm not sure exactly. I'm trying to track down what ended up happening to this order and working with the set reseller on that. And I've also placed other orders for us to bring in battery packs and get them tested. We've tested well over 12 packs now over the course of the last year, and I'm also hoping that we can test at least another 12 here in 2025. Well guys, let's now jump into it. Let's take a look at the first question that we're dealing with here and see what type of answer we can provide for this viewer. So the first question that we have here is in the end example, we'll get to that very shortly here. I got a little slide that I can show you. Can you not run more current through the lower KV motor and get the same power output? And we're specifying as the question, part of the question, 100 amp. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now this is a clip from the video. I've pasted that here so we can ultimately see what the example is referring to. What I was trying to do here is look at manufacturer spec sheets to be able to relate the question that was asked and the answer that I was coming up with. Higher KV does not necessarily equal higher power. And this is key, but we have to understand how this is actually true. And that's what I go through in this example. But we're gonna go and answer this question of the 100 amps on the lower KV motor. So let's see what's happening with that lower KV motor. We have 2500 KV motor at 11.1 volts, gives us just shy of 30,000 RPM, and that's gonna be about 50 amps that it's gonna run at. So this is a maximum of what that motor is capable of providing and you get 555 watts. And then our higher KV motor has 11.1 .1 volts. You get a lot more RPM, so this is significant. You know, we know that horsepower is equal to torque times RPM, torque times the angular velocity. And this is already losing out on a lot of that angular velocity, which is of course reason why we're only seeing 555 watts from that particular motor. Now, what is key here is that this motor can only provide 50 amps. If we try to go and up it to 100 amps, it would not like it all that much because there is limitations to motors. And we can get into that with the second question as to why there's limitations and what would happen if you actually try to exceed that limitation. But really what it comes down to it is you can't actually touch the current value, or at least you shouldn't, unless you're prepared to get rid of a lot of extra waste heat that is produced. However, trying to double the maximum current, you're gonna have to do a lot in order to remove all that waste heat or you'd have to use the motor for very small bursts at a time, which is all very doable. You just need to know how to get the workaround to allow that to happen. At the end of the day, is it optimized for that kind of current being pulled from it? The answer is easily no, because there's other motors within its classification using that exact same motor spec that can do a lot better if your goal is to pull a higher amount of current at the exact same voltage. You can do it with that higher KV brushless motor. So now let's take a look at that second question. Would a lower KV motor not be able to take the same current as a higher KV one given the same size and if not, why? So ultimately what I wanna try and do here is answer the question of why can't it not do that? And that 50 amp max on the 2500 KV motor has this limitation because ultimately the motor was designed around the capability of being able to allow a higher voltage. In order to allow a higher voltage to be used with this motor, you have to have an internal resistance of the motor that is going to be higher. A higher voltage, higher internal resistance, and then you can limit the amount of current so that you don't destroy things. Inside the motor, that's what makes it possible to allow a higher voltage to be used. Now, because you have a higher internal resistance, that means you have to have the current lowered. Now, the difference between 100 amps and 50 amps is actually gonna bring the same amount of heat into this motor in theory. 
and practically you're going to see a very close result as well. The difference here is if you try to go above that 50 amps, you're going to have excess amounts of heat being produced from that brushless motor that like we said before, you're going to have to get rid of. So that's ultimately the answer when it comes down to why is it not able to produce that type of current compared with the other motor that is able to do it. Oftentimes I get asked when I go and show a bunch of motor data, what motor manufacturer comes from. This one in particular comes from New Motors. And if you look at it, it's about a 2000 watt. So if you actually take the multiplier of the volts and amps, you multiply these together, you're gonna find that all of these are gonna come somewhere around that 2000 watt mark, plus or minus maybe 20 or 30 watts or whatever it actually works out to. If we look at the KV in the 3960, you can see that this max volts is 15 versus the max of 132 amps. And if you really tried to use a motor of half the KV, 1980, you're going to be limited to a max of 66 amps. You can't push that motor beyond the 66 amps unless you have a good way of removing all that waste heat. It is certainly going to be very difficult to operate this motor at 11.1 .1 volts and hit 132 amps. You're simply going to struggle to be able to do that for any length of time. You may as well just get the 3960 kV motor and optimize around your gearing if possible. Let's now take a look at this Third question, then I'm gonna jump into this section above it. So if you always want 60,000 RPM, because that's what I talk about a lot here, the max of 60,000 RPM, you can actually see that right here, and we'll get to the reason why here shortly. So if you always want 60,000 RPM or whatever that max is for a certain motor, why is that not a standard? And then above that it says, I feel this does not make sense because RC car manufacturers usually pair 11.1 .1 volt systems with a 3000 kV motor. That gives a max RPM of around 30,000, which seems quite inoptimal. And I, I'm sure he means quite inoptimal based on what I am claiming and to talk about here. So if you really look at performance, we see by the equation that I mentioned, horsepower is equal to RPM times torque. If you get more RPM out of the motor, out of an internal combustion engine, as we probably could more familiarly relate to, we know we get more power out of that higher RPM. If we get more torque and more RPM, then of course we get a lot more horsepower. So this is what it really comes down to. We want to optimize for the maximum amount of RPM, especially since our torque is not going to change based on the amount of RPM that we actually run our systems at, whether we we run 30,000 RPM in our electric motor, 10,000 RPM, or we optimize closer to 60,000 RPM, we're gonna get the exact same torque capability from that brushless motor. So this should make it very apparent that if we want to optimize, we need maximum amount of RPM in order to get maximum amount of horsepower or watts of power out of our system. So this is the reason here, and why is this not standard? Well there's kind of a, a little thing that I wanna, I wanna bring into, and, and I would argue that it is quite standard. If you talk to guys who are running in the speed classes, where they're trying to get absolute top speeds and top amount of performance, you're gonna see that it's always optimized to a high degree of RPM. In fact, there's a lot of guys that take brushless motors and they overvolt it so they get even more RPM out of the motor because more RPM transfers and translates into higher amounts of horsepower, which then leads to higher amounts of top speeds in these types of systems. Let's come back to the whole 11.1 .1 volt system with the 3000 kV motor. RC car manufacturers, what it's saying here is that they typically pair those two systems together, the 11.1 .1 volt battery voltage with a 3000 kV motor. So really when it comes down to it, this here, the 11.1 .1 volt system being paired with a 3000 volt KV motor from RC car manufacturers, it definitely is not optimal. And the reason we know this is because again, looking at the amount of power, if we want maximum power, we want maximum RPM multiplied by maximum amounts of torque. And because torque really doesn't change once you already have the motor, it doesn't matter how much voltage you run that motor on, you're always gonna get the potential to get the same amount of torque out of that motor because it's based Based on current and not voltage. Current is what is associated with torque and voltage is what is associated with RPM and both of these are going to be in combination with the KV and the KT values that we actually explained in this video that I'll link in the description below. 
So this is definitely not optimized because we know that if this motor is has a maximum RPM in this example as 30,000, but it is capable of 40 or 50 or 60,000 RPM, there's a lot of potential that we're losing. Why would a motor manufacturer want to do this? And there's a couple reasons. They may actually get a lot of inventory, a lot of stock around that 3000 KV motor. So it's very easy for them to get this at a cheaper or inexpensive price and bundle it into their radio controlled vehicles. Another good reason is that they don't really care about optimization of everything to a T. That's what true performance enthusiasts are looking for, optimizing the full extent of their setup, where a ready-to-run vehicle just needs to work, it needs to be reliable, you got to make sure that you're not exceeding the thermal thresholds of any of the components. If you have that set, you got a radio controlled, ready-to-run vehicle that you can sell. I think that's the simple answer to that question. So now let's take a look at the bottom section here. My understanding was that you choose KV depending on your intended speed. That is if you want to have full power at high speed, you opt for high KV. If you want full power at low speed, you opt for low KV, keeping in regards never to exceed the max RPM. If I understand you correctly, the only parameter for adjusting speed versus torque at the wheels is gearing. That leaves one quite limited considering only a few gear ratios fit in a ready to run gearbox. Well, this actually brings a good point. Yes, there are limitations to everything in RC, including the amps, the voltage, the gearing that we can select. I did a video on the Limitless V2 where I wanted specific gearing and actually had to modify the way that the vehicle works and use something that really wasn't intended but could work in the setup and doesn't break any rules. It works actually very well well and I was able to run a motor that runs a higher amount of RPM by using gearing that would be a lot lower than what that car originally came from or came with. So if we really look at what it's talking about here is if you're trying to optimize for performance you do want to see what kind of top speed for that maximum amount of RPM that you can get out of the motor this way you can get that RPM component to be maximized and then when you multiply by the torque value you're gonna get the the highest amount of horsepower or wattage, whatever you decide to measure your power in, out of that entire system. There's a point worth noting about this last little paragraph that has been written. And when it comes to optimizing for 60,000 RPM, if the brushless motor's maximum is 60,000 RPM, we're not always going to be able to do it. In fact, maybe for that brushless motor, because of the actual specific KV value, you can't do it because lithium polymer battery packs are of nominal voltages at 3.7 or so. And if that's the case, we have quite a large jump until we get to the next increment of voltage to be able to work into our optimization Organizations. So with this being considered, we do have to look at all of the aspects surrounding our setup. That includes KV as well as voltage. Combined, they produce an overall RPM. But if our gearing doesn't allow it, then we will have to make some sort of sacrifices with our system because at the end of the day, we need something that works or we're still going to be building on a bench and not running anything because it doesn't work yet. If you do end up with 45,000 RPM as the total value that you're left with, with. Yes, it's not fully optimized for 60, but if it's not possible, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. You got to take what is possible and what works. 45,000 RPM is going to be a lot better than 27,000 RPM as we've seen in this exact example. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I know that a lot of this stuff is not exactly easy and it probably takes a few times going through it to understand it, but really what it comes down to and a way that I always find it's easier to understand is relating it back to the internal combustion engine. If an internal combustion engine has a red line of 7,000 RPM, I can guarantee you that it's not making maximum horsepower at 3,500 RPM. There's just no way because you're going to be giving up so much potential for speed and that extra speed you can throw through a gearbox to multiply torque and get you more power to the wheels. And this is ultimately how mechanical systems work. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.